In this lesson, we look at the log module. Now, the log module really doesn't fit the module pattern, so maybe I should just call it a utility, but it really doesn't matter. It seems like every embedded system I worked on had its own logging system. I think this is due to the fact that embedded systems can really vary as to what hardware is available. Also, it isn't hard to create a simple logging system from scratch, so people just do that rather than try to use some existing system. The log module for this course is simple and pretty typical in my experience. I thought I would describe it by giving a list of typical requirements for logging and state which one the log module uh, supports. So the first thing is printf style formatting. C programmers like printf style format formatting for the most part and the, logging, uh, the log module has that. Multiple logging levels is important since the debug level of logging, for example, can be heavy and often you just want to check for errors and warnings. The log module has this and the logging levels are the ones listed here. Logging being controllable on a per module basis is also important. This is for the same reasons as having different logging levels. You want to have no more logging output than, ne than necessary. Non-blocking logging is important for real-time systems, and of course we need that for the super loop design. What this means for our system is that if logging is being generated faster than the console can print it, logging will be lost. We also want low overhead when logging is not active. We will see how the log module achieves this. We would like an automatic timestamp contained with every log message, as that helps us understand the logs. The log module has this. We would like no runtime formatting of log messages. By this I mean in printf style formatting, you take the format string and the arguments and generate the output string. This involves doing, for example, integer to string conversions. The formatting can take a lot of CPU time, so in a small system it would be preferable if the logging could be output in some raw format and then do the formatting offline. I have worked on a high performance system that had this and the implementation was complex but it was also very low overhead. We were able to collect high volumes of logs on live systems in the field. Now the log module doesn't support this. Another feature is to be able to control logging on a per line basis. Again, I have worked on a system that had this and it was also complex. But again, it allowed you to debug systems with minimal logging overhead. This again is useful for field debugging. The log module doesn't support this. Finally, there is the ability to send logging to different destinations like the console, local file storage, the network, and so on. Linux logging has features like this. The log module only supports console output. However, one thing I have often done with embedded system consoles is use the PuTTY feature to save the output to a local file on my, my PC so I have a permanent record of the logs. Now, logging control is done via console commands, and this is made easy by the command module. One handy feature of the logging module is the ability to use a hotkey, which is control L, to toggle logging on and off at a global level. The idea is if log messages are spewing out and you want to enter a command, you might want to disable logging for a little while. Now let's take a look at the logging API in the header file. The first thing I want to show you is this enum. So these are the logging levels. Oops, I didn't. Uh, these are the logging levels used in the um, system, and these are the ones I mentioned in the previous slide. In terms of APIs, uh, functions, there are no core APIs, um, but there are a few other ones. These first two are used to um, handle the global logging active flag. And this third one here, logprintf, is sort of the, uh, the heart of the logging module as in terms of actually printing out the log messages. Now let's look at these macros and these are what are used 
to actually uh, invoke logging from the various uh, modules. And you'll notice all these macros are pretty similar. So let's pick one, like log error, as an example. First of all, these macros have a funny uh, style with a do while zero loop. This is a pattern in C uh, with macros to ensure that complex macros are handled correctly. Google the phrase C macro do while for the story on this. You also notice that the macros reference log underscore level. Now in order to use the logging mod module, your .c file has to have a variable called log underscore level of type enum log underscore level. This variable needs to be static so that it is local to that file. You will see this variable in all of the uh, module implementation files. So as the name says, this contains the current logging level. Normally the value of this variable is modified using the uh, console command. So getting back to this macro, the, you'll see there are two checks done. First, a check of the global flag, and then a check of the local log level. If either check fails, we are done, and that's pretty low overhead. Notice no function was called. If both checks pass, then it calls log printf. One other thing about using macros, say that the log trace level is only going to be used by developers for unit testing and never in the field. In this case, for production builds, you could define the log tr trace macro so no code gets generated. In other words, you would say pound define log trace with, these, with this argument list and stop there. So in that case, there's no code and no overhead. Now let's look at the log implementation. There's not a lot to show here. Here is the variable for the global log active flag that is controlled by the console hotkey. And here are those APIs that are used to manipulate that variable. Uh, this toggles the value of that variable and this uh, log is active, uh, gives you the state of that variable. Then we have the log printf function. You'll notice the first thing it does is prints a timestamp. Now this function has a printf style argument list, uh, which has a variable number of arguments. The C standard libraries provide support to process variable length argument list. And beyond that, they provide support to create your own printf-like uh, functions. So this variable of type VA list and these functions or, or macros, uh, VA start and VA end, um, are supporting the variable length argument list. And this function vprintf is used when creating your own printf style function. I have written code like this countless times. I want to show you just a few things on the console. First, let's get the log level for the timer module. As you can see, it's equal to info. Now we can set the log level for the timer module to debug. Now it's debug. As you remem might remember, uh, the command module supports some wildcard commands uh, for logging. So I can, stay, I can say star log, and it gives me the log level for all the modules. And I can set the log level for all the modules at once. Say I want it all off. And we do star log and it's all off. Now I believe the GPS module will be logging something if we turn it on. There it is. It's printing some information about uh, satellites. And I can use the hotkey. And there it is. Logging off. So now the logging is just being thrown away basically. I hit control L again and the logging is back on. 
So that's it for the log module. Thanks again for watching.